Hey guys, so in today's video I'm going to go over how I process my panorama type shots. And first of all I'm just going to show you a little bit of me shooting the shot and then afterwards I'll go into the details about how to process the images to create the, the panorama. So this is a good example of a panorama type shot that I usually take. Now I don't actually want to create a wide panoramic shot, I'm just looking to compress the scene and I find it uh, sort of pleasing to the eye when the scene is compressed quite a bit, especially for large landscape shots. So, so I typically use a, a vertical orientation and I just sweep across the scene. I try to visualise the section of the scene that I'm trying to take a picture of and I try and just sweep across in rows from the the bottom to the top basically and I try and cover most of the scene that I think needs to be in the shot. Now I've moved on to the laptop. Now this is Lightroom. This is what I typically use for editing and organising my pictures. If you're not familiar with it, I recommend it. Uh, Give it a go, see what you think. But I'm going to go over two different ways of processing panorama photos today. One's going to be a more beginner one, so this is more for panoramas that aren't made up of too many images. So in this case here I've got nine images for the beginner one. And then the second method I'll go over, which is from the photos I took at the beginning of this video, which is more advanced, sort of more involved type one, so that'll be with lots of images. And you have to adjust things here and there to get uh, good results. So let's get to it. So this is a, the first shot here. This is uh, nine images here. I'll just try and show you a little bit about what kind of shot it is. So this shot I was up on the mountain here and there's this sweeping road in the foreground here and if, you, if I just scroll through it's a nice background in, in the distance. It's a little town here and some nice mountains and quite a nice sky for that time of day as well. So the reason I've decided to do a panorama here is because I wanted to get the background uh, large as well so with it just trying to take it all in one shot this area of the scene here would be very small and shrunken and you wouldn't see much of it it would be a lot smaller in the frame and it doesn't affect the foreground as much because this the foreground would be a similar type size even with a wider lens so it just helps bring the background and foreground into the same scale which is nicer to look at so what I'll, tip it, what I'll start doing is I'll just um, shift click so I can select all nine images here and I'll just right click them and go down to photo merge and then panorama. Now it'll load through and create a panorama here. We don't have to do much, we can just wait uh, for it to load. I wouldn't use this method if you're dealing with a lot of images. So typically I'll use this method if I'm somewhere between well, somewhere under 15 images, then I'll, I'll try this one out. Because uh, that's going to be quite easy to process. So this is it, finished processing now. As you can see, the, the borders are a little bit funny looking, but if we look at the image, it's quite a nice looking image. To, if you just try and ignore the, back, the surroundings. Now, I would most of the time use the spherical projection here. But sometimes you do you do want to try the other two just to see because sometimes depending on the scene, the software will come out with a nicer result with cylindrical rather than spherical. In uh, but most cases, I will tend to use spherical. So the next step is to make a nice border around the image, and we're going to use the auto crop checkbox here, and that will just uh, sort of make an imaginary rectangle around this image inside the borders. So we're going to get a nice clean border and around the center. So as you can see. With panoramas with a small amount of images, this method works nicely. It's, it turns out quite a nice image. All the all the individual photos are nice and blended together, and it's fairly straightforward. And then after you, you're happy with the result here, you just click the merge, and it will generate the final resolution, like the full resolution version of that image. Now we're moving on to the more advanced method for creating a panorama shot. This is typically for photos that are made up of a lot more images. So this is the, the photos that I took at the beginning of the video. Uh, as you can see there's a total of 45 images so it's quite a lot uh, to process through and there's lots of different layers and rows that I took there. This method I use a combination of Lightroom and Photoshop to process the images. 
Lightroom is more the organisational side of things, and Photoshop is what I use to actually process through the images. So before we get started, we want to change a few settings in Photoshop to deal with the large amount of images uh, a bit quicker than it would by default. So first we're going to go up to Edit at the top here, and go down to Preferences, and we're going to go to Performance. Now this is where we can um, adjust a few settings that will make processing large amounts of the images uh, a bit quicker. So first of all we want to change the RAM. Uh, well, you might not necessarily, but you probably want to bump it up a little bit. Mine is at 92% there, just to give you a sort of reference. It depends how much programs you have running in the background or how much total RAM your machine has, but you might want to bump it up just a little bit, just to speed things up slightly. Another setting here when it you would like to change is the cache levels. So if you have a good GPU, you want to have a slightly higher cache level. You might want to play around with this setting, but I found some good results with about setting it at about 6. And the final one that it tends to make quite a large difference in the processing time is the cache tile size. It might be set at quite a small number by default, but I would recommend probably going with the highest setting if you have a, a decent amount of RAM and a good processor. You might want to ch mess around with the settings, but you, you try and want to do one of these two. If, if you choose this one and it's still a little bit slow, maybe try go down to this one. just depends on your machine really. So once they've been set, we can start working on the panorama. So for these large panoramas, it's not really feasible to do 45 photos uh, at once. So what I'll typically do is make a panorama of one row and then another panorama of another row and then I can combine the two panoramas together. And for each row I try to keep the number of images I'm processing under 20 because once you get above 20 things start slowing down. If you have a, a beefy computer you can probably do more but I'm on the laptop here so I'm gonna, I try to tend to keep to under 20 images for each process. Now when I'm picking uh, which images to do, I try to pick a row that I've taken. So if you remember at the start of the video, I started in the, m the bottom of the image and I worked my way up in rows. So I tend to look across the, the images here and I can see oh, these lots of images are mostly the sky. So this must be the top row that I took photos of. So I want to process these first, so after I've processed these ones, I'll go through and pick another row here of similar images. So I might want to pick, I might do a small row on this one because these all look quite similar. They have this brownie mountain and a bit of the city there. And it looks like the final rows here, how many images we're going to check. 21, that's fine. We're trying to keep under 20, but 21's okay as well. And these are quite similar images because you can see that there's more bushes, it's slightly more foreground images mostly. So let's make a start on the top row here. I'll just click the first one and shift click the last one. Select all these so there's 17 altogether. I'll click I'll right click, I'll go edit in, and I'll go down to merge to panorama in Photoshop. I'll click that. Sometimes it can take a little bit of time before Photoshop pops up to process from Lightroom. Once it's popped up you'll get presented with the photo merge dialog box and you'll see a list of all the images that you selected in Lightroom here and a few options so typically I leave it on auto on this side bit here and you want to blend images together so it'll take away the border so it'll make it look nicer and I also click geometric distortion correction. This option will slow down your processing a little bit but you do get better results in the end. So we're going to click OK to start the merge and it might take a little bit of time for it to process the whole image but you just got to be patient and wait for it to spit out the panoramic image. After the images have been processed you should get an image similar to this with a nice blended panorama just with a bit of a jaggedy border and a transparent background there and you just want to leave that as it is and just save the image and then close it. This is the panorama image in Lightroom. It just puts it at the end of the, the images that you selected before and it places the panorama there. So this will be the start of the next row that I need to process. So you do the exactly the same process but for the, another row of images, trying to keep the amount of images around 20 or so. 
You should then have a panoramic image for each row that you've processed through. Each of the images will have a jaggedy border like that. So in this example I've got two rows that I've processed through. So here's one of the panoramas here and there's a second one down here. So you want to select both of these. So you just click one and then control click the other just to get them both selected. And we want to go through the same process as before. So we just want to select both of them, go edit in and then merge to panorama in Photoshop. After merging those two panoramas we should end up with a result like this. So you have two layers here with their layer masks and we just want to right click these and then merge layers. This will make the file smaller and easier to deal with when we're editing now. So the next step is that we want to crop in the border to make a nice clean surrounding. So we use the crop tool here and we're just going to bring in the edges into the borders so we don't have any jaggedy edges around the surroundings. Now we typically want to try and have a good aspect ratio in the when I'm forming the frame. So I don't want a really wide panorama because there's a tendency to do that when you've shot a panorama because you've got a nice wide shot. But I want this aspect ratio to be pretty much the same as I would if I just took a single shot. So this is our final image. It should be a nice compressed shot but it's made up of a lot more images so we have a nice panoramic view over the city landscape there and some nice rolling hills in the foreground. So I hope you found this tutorial useful and if you're trying to make some nice panoramic type shots or just create more compressed scenes joining images together and I would appreciate it if you would like and subscribe. Thanks!